Hi, my name is Carl Parrish, and today I'll be presenting joint work with Yong Li and Joseph Lin. To get an intuition for our method, let's look at a task which we're often performing in our everyday lives, which is indoor navigation. And when navigating such an environment, we're leveraging a lot of skills which we have previously learned, like entering buildings, making turns, traversing hallways, or climbing stairways. In fact, we have learned so many of these skills that it's infeasible to explore all of them when faced with a new situation. So instead, if we're put into a new navigation situation, we have a very good prior over which skills are meaningful to explore, like in this situation, where it's very natural for us to go straight or to turn left, and it's also very natural not to turn right and run into the wall, since that's probably not a good idea for efficiently exploring. And so it's really this intuition that allows us to make more efficient progress onto a new navigation task. But where does it come from? We're efficiently leveraging a lot of previous experience which we have in navigating different buildings. And from that previous experience, we can extract two important things. On the one hand, we learn the skills themselves, like we learn how to walk through hallways or we learn how to turn around corners. And then on the other hand, we also learn this prior over when it makes sense to explore a certain skill given the current situation. And this prior is what allows us to take this very large set of skills we have learned and narrow it down to the meaningful skills. And that is what enables efficient exploration on a new target task. In our project, we're trying to leverage a very similar intuition. We're assuming access to a large data set of offline robot experience of the robot solving different tasks, not the one we're currently interested in. And from this large experience data set, we can take two things, the skills themselves. So we extract a large set of reusable skills. And now the larger this data set we're learning from is, the more of these skills we will learn. So in order to efficiently use them, we also learn this kind of prior, which tells us, given the current situation, which skills are meaningful to explore. And we can take these two things together, and then we can apply them towards a new downstream RL task, and we can hope to efficiently learn this task. That's our goal. So let's first talk about the model we're training to learn this kind of skill extraction and skill prior. And we start with a trajectory from our training data set, and we will crop out a random sub-trajectory uh, of a fixed length, say h, that comes with actions, and we will call this action trajectory the skill. And then we will learn a model that looks very much like an autoencoder. So it takes that skill trajectory and it encodes it into a low dimensional embedding space, Z, and from there it decodes it back into the original skill trajectory. And similar to a VAE, we also apply a regularization loss onto that latent space. So the skill posterior output of our, of our encoder network gets regularized towards a fixed prior distribution to learn a smooth representation of skills. And so what the skill posterior represents is really the current skill we're currently encoding. Now, crucially, in our project, we also try to learn this prior over skills that takes in the current state and outputs this prior distribution that captures all the different skills that are meaningful to explore in the current situation. It does not explicitly capture all the other skills we have maybe learned from the large data set, but that are not meaningful to explore. And we can learn this prior distribution by regressing onto the posterior target that comes from our encoder. And for more details, please just check out our paper on this. Now, once we have learned this model, we can use it in a hierarchical RL setup for learning new downstream tasks. In fact, we will learn a skill policy that now outputs skill embeddings instead of primitive actions, and we can take those embeddings and decode them into executable actions using the pre-trained skill decoder. Crucially, we also leverage our pre-trained skill prior to regularize our skill policy during training, and this will really help us to focus, uh, to focus the output of that skill policy to only explore those skills that are meaningful to explore. And this is what enables us to do efficient RL. We will test this approach, which we call spiral for skill prior RL on three different environments. Um, and in each of these environments, we assume access to a large data set of training data where the agent is solving a very, uh, like a large set of different tasks. And then we test transfer of the learned skills and skill prior onto new tasks, which are different from the ones that we trained on they're, they're usually like co more complex, like a bigger maze, uh, and they require long horizon reasoning, like in this kitchen task. Now we can look at the qualitative outputs of our skill prior. So here we compare uh, sampling random skills um, from the ones that we have learned versus sampling skills from the learned skill prior. And we can see that on this block stacking environment, for example, it really leads to more efficient exploration since it focuses the exploration onto those skills that really help us, for example, pick up these blocks. And it, we can also show that using the skill embeddings and the learned skill prior, we can learn really complex long horizon tasks, like in this kitchen environment where the agent needs to sequentially manipulate many different uh, objects in this kitchen. Quantitatively, our approach outperforms baselines that, for example, try to use skills without the learned prior, or try to learn a prior over primitive actions instead of temporally extended skills. 
Now for more details, please come see us at the poster session or join our plenary talk on Wednesday. And please also find our code on the website. Thanks a lot.